Hi everyone, welcome to Puddingwood Avenue. My name is Bindi. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make this cute little pumpkin. So um, it's really easy to make. There's not a lot of rows to do uh, and um, it's very, very cute. Uh, so the things we're going to need today are some, is some orange yarn. This is birch uh, yarn that I got from, it's actually Birch Shimmer that I got from the reject shop um, and I'm making a blanket out of the rest of it. The orange doesn't go with the purples that are in the blanket so I've cut that bit out and so that's what I've been using to make my little um, pumpkins. Sorry if you can hear the mower, Mr. David's out there mowing. He was going to go down the front of the paddock but I think he's up here somewhere. <laughs> um, a little bit of off cut of brown. I don't even know where I got that from. And we don't really need a lot of it anyway. A pair of scissors. Um, a, a darning needle. I like the one with the hook in it. Makes it easy. A couple of pipe cleaners. These ones are half. You can use brown. Dave, Mr. David likes the brown one. I like the green one. Uh, yeah, a pair of scissors. Just put these out of the way as I go. <laughs> And um, today we're going to use a size 4 mil hook. So this is really, it really is quite a simple pattern. Um, I'm on outside, so uh, it's quite hot here today. It's 35 degrees Celsius in my shed, so I'm sitting on my back patio again. I did that yesterday when I made my other little video, and it was so nice. The only problem is you can hear every bird, every chicken, rooster, duck, dog, mower. <laughs> that's happening in the world. So I apologize for all the background noises. Okay, so how we're gonna start this off is we're gonna start with a magic circle. Now lots of people panic about, oh my gosh, magic circles, they're so hard. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. It's exactly the same as making your slip knot. So if you're making a slip knot, you are just making a circle that looks like a, an awareness ribbon. The short side is at the, ba at the back and coming out to the left. All you're going to do is put your hook in there. This is a slip knot. We're going to put our hook around, pull it through the loop, and pull it tight. That's how we start most straight projects. A magic circle is exactly the same, except we don't pull it tight. So we're going to make a, a circle. Make sure that the short side is at the back. Keep my hands over the top of my Puddingwood Avenue sign so I know where, where I'm, in, I'm in shop. And we're going to pull our yarn through the loop, but we're not going to pull it tight. Um, put your finger through the hook, if, through the hole if you like, just to keep it so that that's what you're going to work into. And just to lock off your magic circle, you're going to do a chain. It doesn't count as anything, but that's your magic circle, and that's what we're going to work into. If you feel comfortable leaving your finger in, th in that hole, please do so. Um, it's whatever works for you. All right, so round one, we're going to work six single crochets into that, into the space where my finger is. So we're going to do one. And I'm going to take my finger out because now we've started and I'm going to get rid of that tail. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six single crochets. We're going to pull that circle a little bit tight. Not too tight. I don't like making it really tight until the end, uh, until we've done a couple of rounds, um, just so that we've got a bit of space. So we're going to work into, we're going to work in continual rounds which means we're not going to slip stitch into that first stitch, chain up one and do round two. It's just going to be a continual circle so that we've got no, no join. So we're going to count back. So I'll pull this out a little bit. Now I'm going to count back. So here's my first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that V there is what we're going to work into. That's our first stitch. We can't count our chain one down here because that doesn't count. So I'm just going to make that a little bit big. Put my hook back into my yarn. I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to put it into that V stitch. I promise you that's the hardest part of this is just getting started. Okay, I found my first stitch. I'm going to 
bring that tail to the front. And I'm going to do a single crochet. That's my first stitch. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. Normally um, I really like using store-bought stitch markers and especially when you're doing circular crochet you kind of need to make sure that you know where you're up to. But if you don't have a stitch marker or you can't find a safety pin, a bobby pin, um, there's lots of things you can use. I'm just going to use a piece of this brown and as an off cut. Now I'm going to pop this in here. That's my first stitch. Okay, and that's just going to mark that where I'm up to. So that I know when I get back around here that I have to finish in the stitch before it. Okay, to continue on um, round number two, we're going to do another single, oh, that popped out. <laughs> I'm going to do another single crochet into that same stitch. So find where it goes, hold your crochet hook properly. And I'm going to do another single crochet into that stitch. So that's what we're going to do all the way around. We're going to do two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. So we started with six, we're going to end with 12. So we're just going to do two into each single crochet all the way along, all the way around. And that will double our stitch count. And this, after this round, this is where I will pull my um, center closed. One, two. Oh, that breeze is so nice. So the weather like at your place. I know um, I've got a fair few people watch from America and you guys are just coming into winter. You're in autumn or fall as you guys call it over there at the moment. I've done two in that one. Um, we're in spring heading into summer and I'm going to say that this year is summer is going to be hot. Like I said, it's 35 degrees in my little shed at the moment, which is not good. Okay, so I've done two in each stitch. I know that I'm done because here's my first stitch I worked into. So I'm going to stop now. I'm going to pull my stitch marker out and I'm going to pull my tail. I'm going to close up that center hole just like that. Okay, so that's round two. We're going to do round three. I'm going to pop my stitch marker underneath that so I know that that's where I've got to stop. Okay, so let's do, we're going to do for round three, we're going to do batches of three stitches. So we're going to do one in the first stitch, one single crochet, and we're going to do two single crochets in the next. So we're increasing. So one in the next stitch and two in the following stitch. So we're on round three, we're doing three stitches. So one, two, three. So we're waltzing at the moment. One, two, three. One, two, three. If I'm going too fast, please slow me down. One, or rewind, play it back. Two, three. And I can see I've got one in here, two in that one, and I've finished the round. One. Two, three. Okay, so that is round number three. Round four, it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to count in um, multiples of four, and so we're going to do one, one, two in the third stitch. Okay, so I'm going to move my stitch marker up to the next row, round, <laughs> where we're up to. Sorry, bump the camera. Doing tutorials is not as easy as you think it might be. There's always something that's in the way, not working, <laughs> making noise in the background. All right, so let's start row four, round four. So we're gonna do one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the second stitch, and we're going to do two single crochets in the third stitch. 
Okay, so let's do our little dance again. So one, two, and we're going to do two stitches into the next stitch. Three and four. Single crochet, single crochet, two in the next stitch. Three and four. <laughs> One, two, three, and four. Find this next one. Don't ever be afraid to just pull your stitches apart a little bit to see that you've got the right stitch. Um, sometimes they get hidden by the fluff of the yarn. Sometimes they get um, hidden underneath um, other stitches. Uh, so yeah, if you need to see where it is, just pull it apart. I can see, okay, there's my next one. That's where I'm working into. Yep, three and four. I've got three stitches left, which is exactly what I want. So one, two, three and four. We're back to our stitch, which is great. I'm going to pull that out. Okay, and so now we're going to start row number five. So we're going to be doing working in multiples of five. So it's single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, two in the next stitch. So find the first stitch, here it is. So one single crochet, that stitch mark is in the way, always is. But it's good to know that you don't have to go out and buy commercial things, you can find things around the house, things that you've got by your side that um, you can use as stitch markers and other tools. So that's my three single crochets, one, two, three, and I'm gonna do four and five into the same stitch, four and five. So one, 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 and two into the next. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four and five. This is how you make any circular pattern as well. Um, don't be afraid to make it as big or as small as you want. If you wanted to continue on with this, you could make a much bigger pumpkin than the little mini pumpkin that we're making today. Um, this is how you make beanies. Uh, this is how you make placemats if you wanted round ones or dishcloths or face scrubbies. It's the same mathematical print, uh, principle. Four and five. Oh, missed, slipped off my hook. Oh, and now I'm splitting my yarn. Jeez, I'm doing a good job. All right, let's fix that up. Beautiful. So that was four and five. One, two, three. <laughs> and five. Oh, chickens. My poultry make me laugh. So my Rhode Island Red has just found a cicada coming into summer. We have cicadas here and at night time they, they chirp for about 20 minutes at full on, full pelt. Oh my gosh, they're loud. And she's just caught one and now the other chickens are chasing her because they want it. Okay, sorry, distracted. <laughs> All right, and so I've got one, two, three, four stitches left, which is great because we're gonna do two in this last one, remember? So, one, two, three, four, 
four and five. So we've got two more increased rounds. Stop it. Sit down. Oh, now the <sighs> Maynard is now chasing the chickens for fun and games. I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that. Crisis averted. Rooster's still freaked out. <laughs> Dogs have left each other. Oh. It's fun and games here, seriously. Um, all right, so that's round six, uh, round five. So we're going to do two more increase rounds. So we've got round six and round seven following exactly the same principle. So round six, we're going to go uh, one, two, three, four single crochets. And then we're gonna do five and six into the fifth one here. So. Single, single, yeah, you big buff head. Single, single, so that's four single crochets, one in each stitch, and now we're going to do two in this next one. So that's five and six. Okay, one, two. Three, four, five, and six, and again, one, two, three, four, five, and six in the same one. A little apart, make sure you've got the right stitch. One, two, three, no, four, five, and six. One, two, three. Four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four. Mm, that works out, yep. Oh, and now I've heard thunder coming. Five and six. So I'm actually thinking that maybe I should have stopped back here a little bit. It's okay, it doesn't matter. We're gonna move our stitch marker up. And if you have a look, now I learnt this a couple of weeks ago, and I have said this in another video. Some, when you're working in the round and you're increasing, your stitch count will end up sometimes over here somewhere, okay? And you have to do an extra couple of stitches to make it match up to the beginning. So I can see, here's my little bump, here's where I started. And so when I would got to um, the end of round seven, I would have added a couple of stitches anyway, but I've done it a little early. So I've added in, you can, I, can, I can see, I can follow from here, that my circle is very round because I didn't stop over here where I probably should have. Um, but with my distraction, I kind of got, you know, distracted. Um, and I've done an extra round. But it doesn't matter because it's brought it back to where it needs to be. So my round seven is going to be the last of the increase round. So I'm going to do five single crochets and two into the next one. Now, I might, I hope the mower was not too loud. I think he's going down to the middle paddock now. All right, so we're gonna go five, one, two, three, four, five, and I didn't put my crochet, my marker in, did I? 
So one, two, three, four, five. So it's actually got to go in here. I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to put my hook in here. And I'm going to put my marker back in. I'm just going to put one side so I know that I'm back to the beginning. Um, I don't really need it because there's my two into one here. So this is my next stitch. So um, I don't really need it because I can tell from here, but that's okay. For tutorial purposes, I'm going to leave it in just to show you what you've got to do. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, and I need to do two into the next stitch. So six and seven. <coughs> Excuse me, so one, two, three, four, five, and two into the next, six and seven, one, two, three, four, five, and two into this one, six and seven. Wow, that little tiny bit of thunder that I heard has dropped the temperature, I reckon by about five degrees, just in the last couple of minutes. Amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Listen to that little baby chicken cheeping. Not sure if you can hear it. They're so cute. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so that's the beginning part of our pumpkin and we're going to stop increasing now. So we're going to do the next five rows, one stitch in each, one stitch in each stitch, all the way around. So one single crochet into every stitch, um, and we're gonna do that for five rows. So row eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So I'll do the first one with you, and we should have 42 stitches in total. I'm gonna to move my stitch marker up. Um, I actually don't count, <laughs> I just use the stitch marker, but if you're a counting person, um, feel free to count. We should have 42. Um, counting, part of the thing I like about crochet, just looking what that chicken's cheaping at. Okay, sorry, distractions. I sit outside and it's worse than inside. So, um, what, one of the things I like about crochet is, it's good for mindfulness. It's something that you can do quietly, it's something that um, you don't need to interact with, but if you wanna sit beside somebody else and do it, you can. Um, uh, if you've had a bad day and just need something to calm your mind, something as simple as, I love, I love granny stitches. I love double crochet, it's my favorite stitch but I love to do anything with granny clusters um, because to me that's just mindfulness. I don't really have to think about what I'm doing. 
um, whereas, and I don't really have to look, especially if you're doing like a granny square, for example, because you can feel where the stitches go. You don't have to look. Whereas with single crochet, as much as however this, how easy is this, right? Um, you have to still have to look at where you're putting your hook. Double crochets, you don't have to do that. Granny stitch clusters, they work up beautifully. Granny, granny stitch um, projects are very popular at the moment. They're coming back into fashion. So there's lots of granny stitch cardigans and bags and all that sort of stuff out in the markets and in shops for huge prices. Oh. But um, crochet for me is all about mindfulness, um, accomplishment, um, and you know, if I'm giving something I've made to somebody, that that feeling of I've done something for somebody else um, is worth it. So if you want to count your 42 stitches, you go right ahead and count them. Uh, my thing is, I'm actually going to mark on my page where um, how many, just with tally marks, five little tally marks so I can see which what I'm up to because I have to put it down and go and break up chickens and dogs again you know I'm going to come back and I know what round I'm on but I'm going to show you a little trick too gosh that rooster makes some awful noises so it's going to start curling upwards which is fine we want it to curl because we want it to be a ball but we're actually going to make it curl the other way it doesn't really matter to start with and we can do it once we get to you know down to round 12 um, but we want it to go that way. How look good does that look, right? If I hadn't put that in, we could have kept going and made it a coaster. Easy peasy. So that is round number five. So on my book, I'm just going to put my little handy dandy book. So, I'm, so here's my really rough how to make it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do um, a tally mark. So I've done one. I'm not going to take my stitch marker out. I'm actually going to leave it there and I'm just going to keep going because I know by the time I get to the top and that way also too it's going to be easy to count my rows if I don't do a marker a little tally mark but I'm just going to go round and round and I'm going to do five rows of this or four more rows and um, so you can pause the video here and I'll meet you back when we're done or almost done round 12. Okay, so we're back and you can see that we've done one, two, three, four, five extra rows. So we're now on to, so that was the end of round 12. We're on to row, third, not row, round 13. So round 13 is where we're going to start to decrease. So in the increase rows, we went, um, we increased, we put joined, we did two stitches into one um, stitch. This time we're actually going to start joining two stitches together. So we're going to do the opposite of what we did here. We're going to go backwards. So we're going to go five single crochets and then we're going to do, join two together. Now to make them invisible, we're going to do the front loop only when we come to our join two togethers. So I'm just going to put my stitch marker in and we're going to do five single crochets first. One, two, three, four, five. And to join two together, you would normally do, if you're just going to join them two together, you do a single stitch but not complete it. Go into the next one, single stitch and not complete it. Yarn over and pull through all loop, three loops on your hook. Now, when you do that, I find it tends to make a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a gap, and I don't like that. So this method here is front loop only. So we're gonna go into, so you can see our V stitches, and the one, the first part of the V, the one facing you, closest to you, is our front loop. So we're gonna go under the front loop only, capture our yarn just like a single crochet we're not going to complete it we're going to go under the first loop of the next one yarn over pull it through three loops on our hook 
yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's just going to create less of a hole where you can see your stuffing. So we're going to do that again and we're going to go five single crochets and then we're going to do two single crochets together front loop only. So here's our five. One, two, three, four, five, just like normal. And now we're going to decrease. So we're going to do front loop only, front loop only, yarn over and pull through all three loops. It pulls a bit there, but once it's done, you can't tell. Okay, so five, one, two, three, four, Five, and we're going to decrease front loops only. So front loop, capture, front loop, capture, yarn over through all three loops. Five singles, one, I don't know about you, but me moving this all the time is annoying me, so probably annoying you too. Two, I'll have to put something under it next time. Three, four, five here's our decrease front loop only front loop only yarn over and through all three loops so five single crochets one two three four five here's our decrease front loop only pop <laughs> front loop only yarn over through three loops on your hook five singles one two three four five decrease so front loop only and capture front loop only capture yarn over through all three loops one two three four five I've got two stitches left which is great so we're going to go front loop only, capture, front loop only, capture, yarn over through all three loops. And you can see that we've made like a little bowl that's starting to close up. And that's exactly what we want. Oh, I hope I don't run out of yarn. I think I might be playing yarn chicken. All right. So we're going to go to round 14, which is exactly the same, just the opposite of what we've done. We've just done five single crochets and decreased. We're going to go four single crochets in this round and then decrease. So, one, two, three, four. Here's our decrease again. Again, front loop only. You can see, well, you, actually, you can't see any large holes. That all looks the same, and that's because we're doing this front loop only which is the invisible decrease so we're going to go under the front loop and capture under the front loop and capture yarn over through all three loops four single crochets one two three and four and of course the one thing i didn't tell you that you need is going to be stuffing how are we going to fill this we're into our decrease, so front loop only, capture, front loop only and capture, yarn over through all three loops, four single crochets, one, two, three and four. Here's our decrease, so front loop only, capture, front loop only, capture, Yarn over through all three loops on your hook. 
for single crochets one two three and four I'm going to do decrease so front loop only capture front loop only capture yarn over pull through all three loops for single crochet one two three and four here's our decrease sound like a broken record don't I so just want to do this with you because sometimes if you haven't done like amigurumi type stuff before sometimes it can be a little confusing um, and this is this is such an easy project three and four that I really want you to have success with this so you have a go at some other things as well um, again I don't always <laughs> I like making amigurumi I really like making the small parts that go to get go with it and like you know the arms and the legs and all that sort of stuff that's great my problem is <laughs> I just can't sew them together so they sit right but uh, all this sort of fine stuff I love to do all right and we're on to our last two stitches which is great because our, that we're on our decrease so front loop front loop yarn over pull through okay round 15 three single crochets so you can see that our little hole is getting smaller our pumpkin starting to take shape once we start putting the strings on it and pulling it through um, it's going to look amazing okay so we're down to where are we up to it's row 15 so we're going to do move my stitch marker and we're going to do three single crochets and then a decrease so one two three decrease oh that's wrong <laughs> decrease see even people on YouTube make mistakes no one's perfect one two speaking of mistakes and I'm not sure how I'm going to fix this unless I redo the whole video is my little ghosty I left off one of his little shells so he's only got five and he's supposed to have six wasn't real wasn't until I put the um, was editing the video that I realized that he had one of his little feet things missing it's like Oh, so I'm not sure how I'm going to fix that video. I might have to make it again. Or, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, there's a boo-boo in that video. And I'm going to have to sort that out. But everyone makes mistakes, right? He still looks good. <laughs> He's just not symmetrical. He's supposed to have six. Oh, um, where am I up to? That was my decrease. One. Two, three, and a decrease. Front loops only. One and two. I'm thinking I might do a tutorial too on how to read a pattern um, because lots of people can um, do follow tutorials, and that's great. Some people are very visual learners. Some people need it to have be written down, and that's okay. Um, but if you can do both it's such a godsend and um, yeah it's well worth it learn to read a pattern learn to read a pattern I think I uh, made a booby back there somewhere but it's not going to in the overall scheme of things it's gonna be fine all right here we go we're getting down to the nitty-gritty we're gonna do two together two single crochets and then a two together and then we're just going to start doing full decreases all the way around to close up our gap. So we're going to go one, two single crochets and a decrease. Front loop only. Now if you want to stick with me all the way around you can. If you want to um, just pause it, do it and then come back to me that's fine. 
I just want to just keep going till we get to the end because we're nearly there. One, two, and then two together. One, two, two together. One, two, two together. Nearly back around. So after this round is when I will stop and I will go and get some fill, fibre fill. You can use um, scraps of yarn, um, you can use old toy stuffings, um, you can fill it with pretty much anything you want. And awesome. Okay, so there's our gap there. If you wanted to put safety eyes in him, now would also be the time to do that. So I've got a couple of safety eyes here. They're not actually safety eyes. They're noses because um, David said they need to be like angry eyes. So if I wanted to, I'm not going to put pop these in, but if you wanted to make sure on the same row, pop some eyes in a nose, a jack-o'-lantern mouth. My problem is I don't, I don't, I hate, sewing. I hate sewing, I hate hand sewing um, and because these are noses they're triangular shaped so oh, sorry so however if you, there's one way you can have them that they look like they're angry eyes you know sometimes they look like sad eyes but if you want to put eyes in, into your pumpkin now would be the time to do that just brought them out here to show you but I'm not actually going to do that all right I'm going to pause the video because I didn't bring my fiber fill out um, I'm just going to get the fibre fill and then we'll fill him up and then we'll finish him off. Okay, I'm back with the fibre fill. So I'm just going to grab some and we're going to stuff him full of a fibre fill. I might just pull my, oh, I nearly lost my loop. I'm just going to pull that out. Alright, and so we're going to stuff it. Now, you kind of want it full. You want him to be a nice stuffy stuff. But when you're doing amigurumi, you need to be careful because if you overstuff, they will, the stuffing will actually come through and you'll be able to see it. Now, we want our pumpkin to be nice and tightly stuffed because when we do our wrapping, um, we want it to bulge out. So, how's he looking there? Mm, I'm gonna go a bit more, I think. You can only see my stuffing because I'm putting it on the outside instead of the inside. All right, so stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. Just checking to make sure the holes aren't too big at the top. Let's do a little bit more on this side. Again, I'm going to ask the same question I keep asking in my videos. Why does my rooster crow in the middle of the day? Why? He's just annoying. All right. Um, that might do, I might just double check before I do the final close up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a round of just decreases. Okay, so let's put your stuffing in there, stuff him right in. Just going to put my stitch marker, move it up to the next round. And I'm just going to do decreases. A little bit harder now because we've got that stuffing in there, but that's quite okay. Sorry because I keep bumping the stand. Okay, so we're going to go front loop only, capture, front loop only, capture, close it off two together. And we're just going to keep going all the way around. Try not to capture any of the... Um, the stuffing into your stitch. If we were just to do normal, just normal two together decreases, our holes will, would be much bigger. Okay? They will settle down a little bit. 
They're a bit big at the moment as we're doing them, but they, I promise they will settle down. So we're just gonna, can you see I'm poking my stuffing into um, the project as I'm catching my stitches because I really don't want to try and catch them into the into the stitch or they will be noticeable so front loop front loop come on you can do it no all of the ply would be good thank you <laughs> right. slow and steady wins the race I know I say that a lot at the moment but um, I've been doing um, fables with um, my ICP students grade three we're doing fables and we've been talking about the tortoise and the hare <laughs> um, what else have we done the boy who cries wolf the ant and the grasshopper um, and there's another one and the kids are really enjoying those stories and now their job is to retell it in their own words and they're loving that having to write their own story. I think I would put some more, a little bit more stuffing in that. He's a little bit too soft and pliable yet. Okay, so I've done that one. So you can see our hole is almost closed. We're gonna do one more round of just decreases. And then I'm going to show you how to um, pull it together. So I'm just going to ignore my stitch marker and I'm just going to keep going round. But when I get back to here the next time, I'm going to stop. I've got an ant biting me behind my knee. I'm thinking, what is that brown thing in there? Oh, it's the stitch marker. <laughs> and pull through. It's getting a little tight and that's okay. We want it to be tight. I'm just gonna squish it together a little bit. I want it yarn chicken, obviously. Something's biting me. All right, keep going. We're nearly there, we're nearly there. So I've got one, two, so I need to go into the next one. It's embarrassing for everyone to see how goombi I actually am. But you know, anyone can do anything. Now look, if darling mama, llama mama Kayla, who has just lost another finger, can do it. No one dare had better complain. What well, she's an absolute inspiration, this lady. If you haven't looked, at, looked up her channel, go and check her out, Lama Mama Kayla. She is totally inspirational. And I would say even motivational because at the moment she can't crochet because like I said, she's just had her, um, the last, her little, her pinky finger cut off um, due to a, a um, disease that she has. No, we might be okay. We might be okay. All right, so we're gonna end this off here. So what we're gonna do is, we've just completed our, um, our decrease, no, it's an increase. So I'm just gonna do a chain. I'm gonna pull a good length of yarn find what I did with my scissors and I'm going to pull that tight now somebody asked me the other day how how to end things off it's just exactly that if you do a chain you pull out um, the stitch you pull the yarn out and you give it a, a good strong tug to make that knot and that's how you finish off your project all right so okay I can get rid of that stitch marker um, I'm going to before I pull that, we're going to make our stem because we want our stem to fit in to the top in here. Oh, don't pull the yarn out, the filling out. Okay, so here is where our offcut of brown comes from. 
So I'm going to use the same size hook and I'm going to start with a slip knot. And I'm going to chain, I think I did eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to um, do a single crochet into the next round row and single crochet all across. Hang on. So I did that. Let's do that again. Ha! <sighs> okay, I'm going to make a slip knot because I didn't show you, so I just want to make sure. I just did it, sorry about that. So I'm going to do a chain of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in the second uh, chain from the hook, now of course we don't include this one, it's not a completed stitch, we never count the loop on our hook. We're going to go not into the first one, but in the second loop from the hook, we're going to do a single crochet. That's a much better explanation, isn't it? Sorry about that. And we're going to do a single crochet into the rest of the stitches across. So you should have seven. So three, four, five. six and seven we're going to chain one turn our work and we're going to single crochet across now we're going to do this uh, how many times did I go across about five or six rows I think and then I just turned it um, put it together and sewed it closed so we're going to do into the first stitch we're just going to single crochet across one, two, both loops of the um, stitch would be good. Three, four, I can feel the rain coming. Not complaining, Just making it cool. Five, six. Now this doesn't have to be anything special. This is just going to be our little top. Chain one, turn your work, go again. One, two, three. Sorry, I'm taking it off screen. I'm bringing it closer and closer to me. Four, five. I have no idea. What did I just do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No idea where I got this yarn from. I have a feeling it might be out of a cake of some description. But I, I really don't know. So any little scrap will do. We just want to make a nice little rectangle and then we're just going to join it together to make our stem. Oh, that breeze is so nice. Now, it doesn't really matter how many rows that you do. So, basically, we're just going to join it up. I need to do a couple more because hit this a little bit. That's a little bit. Uh, no, that's not bad. Even though this one is a smaller pumpkin, and I'll tell you how this one's smaller. It's got a bigger stem on it. I might do another row. It's actually not a bad size. I might do one more row. I don't even know how many we've done. How many have we done? One, two, three, four. Let's make it five. So chain one and single crochet back down here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. Again, how you end off is we're going to do a chain, pull your yarn. I'm actually going to leave a bit of a tail to sew it together. 
snip my yarn, pull it through and give it a nice tug like that. Okay, so I am just going to, it's the same on either side, doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to fold it in half. And I'm going to find my uh, needle and thread up my yarn. And I'm just quite literally going through underneath the V, pulling it through. That was that's my tail. I might tuck that on the inside because it doesn't really matter. We don't need it. Beautiful. And then I'm going to go in under the next stitch, find the next stitch on that side, pull it through, tuck that little bit of a thing back in there. And quite literally just going from side to side because we're not going to see it. Under both loops. Even this, I hate sewing, I hate sewing, I hate sewing. Even this little bit, I'm not. It's okay if it kind of bends too because we don't want our um, stem to be nice and straight and even because when you harvest a pumpkin, that's not how it comes off the vine. Okay, decide which end you want to poke into the into your pumpkin and I'm quite literally just going to poke it in there. Beautiful. Nice little stem. Now I am going to, to just going to stick my needle into there. I'm going to pull it right down to the hole at the bottom where we started and I'm going to pull it through and I'm just going to just leave it there just for the for the moment okay I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that at the end okay now let's finish off our hole here so with our nice big long orange tail I'm gonna get rid of the brown now I'm gonna thread my needle and I'm going to go underneath the stitches and I'm gonna try and capture not all the way around, but just going to capture some of the brown yarn that's in our stem. I'm not going to pull it tight just yet, but I'm going to go underneath. So I caught it there. I'm not going to catch it here. And go under each all of these stitches. I'm probably going to catch my brown yarn here. It only just has to be a little tiny bit, just so it's not going to pull out. Go underneath the orange underneath the orange and I'm going to pull that tight and I mean I'm pulling that tight okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this tail um, doesn't really matter where but I'm going to bring it down I'm going to run it down and I'm going to find that circle that hole in the middle and I'm going to poke my yarn in through there and I'm going to come back up to the top but on the opposite side Sorry, off camera. Find the hole on the opposite side of where I've just pulled that. And I'm going to pull that pretty tight. Okay, oh, lucky I could have a hold of it. So I'm going to pull that pretty tight. I'm going to take that yarn and I'm going to wrap it back around and I'm going to go back through that hole and I'm going to bring it back up the front side of my pumpkin, the top of my pumpkin. And I'm going to pull it. Now I want to pull it tight. I do want to pull it tight. I want those nice segments of my pumpkin. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to make mine six. So I'm going to come over a little bit and I'm going to bring it. I'm going to go back in through that hole and I'm coming out the other side of my stem there to make my next segment. So again, I'm going to pull that nice and tight and I'm going to take him down, poke him back through the middle and back up somewhere that I haven't been before to make my last lot of quadrants. Pull it nice and tight. Look how good those sections look. And then we're going to do 
these last couple of bits here. So back down into the middle, I'm gonna, oh, take that out. So I'm going to pull that nice and tight. I'm going to come back down into the middle. Try not to hit your brown yarn, but it doesn't really matter. Come back on the opposite side of my stem. I'm going to pull it really tight. And then going back in here. Now, does it matter if your sections aren't equal? Mine aren't too bad. But does it matter? Not at all. So we're down here. I'm going to go back into the middle, up out the other side here. Again, pull it nice and tight. And I'm going to go back here, underneath. Try not to catch my brown. Oh, nice and close. And here comes our last segment. Cool. Look at that pumpkin, he looks really cool. Okay, now I'm just going to poke this back down here and come down to the bottom. Oh, lost my yarn. Don't you hate that? So, this is why you need a really long tail for your um, when you're ending off your actual pumpkin because we need to go and make these segments each time so I'm going to just take that back down down and it's getting a bit tight and that's okay tight is good we want that down here so that's it there and I'm just going to run it under a couple this is why the um, hook is really good that is not coming off. I'm going to snip that. Now with our brown, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a little knot, a little, um, just going to go under some stitches a couple of times and it'll look like the bottom part of the pumpkin. Again, hooked needles are very good for this sort of stuff oh, I caught that yarn there you son of a monkey that's okay who looks at the bottom <laughs> all right and then I'm just going to snip it close actually what I might do is I might take it out the top if I can if I can if I can Try and get it up into the middle of my stem. Cut it there. Ta-da! So there's my little pumpkin. And all we've got left to do is our little vine curly Q thing. Now, again, Mr. David likes the, the dark brown. And I have done this once. Personally, I don't like the dark brown. I think it's too dark. But all you need to do is wrap it around your finger, a hook, a pen, and find a hole, poke in the little wire. Now you can hot glue that if you wanted to, but me personally, eh, I like the green. <laughs> so I'm just going to wrap it around my finger. I went too close. It's like when you sing and you start too high. I started too high. Okay, wrap right around my finger a few times. Just separate out the vine, the curls. Maybe poke that one underneath so it's a bit safer. And again, find a hole. Poke that wire in. And again, you can, um, if you wanted to, you could um, hot glue it in place so it doesn't come off. Whatever floats your boat. So there's my pumpkin. It's stem and a little viney thing. Let me, can I? No, I always go the wrong way. So there's my little pumpkin. Now this one is smaller, and that's the only difference between these two is I made this one with a three and a half mil hook, and today's one I made with a four mil hook. 
So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this very simple Halloween. We don't do Thanksgiving in Australia. So it doesn't apply to us. But Halloween-y theme. Again, if you want to put faces on them, you can. Um, I hope you'll give this a go. I think they're really cute. Um, I ha might have to play with my pipe cleaner on this one because it's so big. Oh, you can see I didn't pull that one tight. Oh, I broke it. Oh, no. All right. I'll have to do a repair on that. That, mu that must have been the one that I got caught here. That's okay. I will repair it. I'll find my other little um, darning needle and I'll sew it in. But that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please leave a, um, hit that like button on your way out. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button as well and the notification bell so that when I put out a new video that you are notified. Uh, happy Halloween, which is tomorrow. And that's it from me. Thank you and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.